So uh, things for me are kind of becoming more simple lately. And that, um, you know, the person seems to fade away at times. And then what's left is a sort of uh, a presence yeah. or an awareness that's everywhere. Yeah. And what I'm confused about is that there's also something there looking at that awareness. I feel like it feels like me. And I don't know if that's just the ego still there at those times. It, it's, um, it's as if I'm a flashlight. But I, I, I can't really look at the flashlight, but the flashlight can look at this awareness that's everywhere. Huh. I think that you may be mistaking aware, the awarenesses. What do you mean it can look at this awareness that's everywhere, like the personal awareness? I guess what I mean is, is that something is aware of the presence. So there's this presence that's everywhere. And yet, you know, it's aware of itself. It's, maybe it's just aware of itself. Yeah. It might, it might be that the mind is still there a bit, commentating, but that's okay, the mind commentates, but the, it's commentating and making it feel this div, a little bit of divide. Or it could be that you're just not used to feeling that presence knows itself everywhere, but it can't actually see itself, but it knows itself. It knows yeah. it is instantly. Yeah, that's what's surprising about it. Just while we're talking about it now, is that the presence is aware of itself without me reflecting on it. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would just let it come and go and wash over you and not give it too much thought. It's a happening way beyond that person. That person always comes back in and claims and feels like it has something to do with it or that it's involved in some way and then it disappears again and then there is just presence and then it comes back and I just wouldn't give it, it attention, not even giving it attention as to when it's there or when it's not. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I think it, this just comes from, you know, the person where I'm afraid of letting go of control. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could just be swallowed up in this and just disappear into this timeless presence <laughs> and I'll always be free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so terrifying for that person. It really is. When that person comes back and comprehended that it never had any relevance, I know that sounds mean, but it never, <laughs> it never had, it never was experiencing this and it never existed. That's really terrifying. It's it, like beyond beyond fear of, say, a wolf or fear of a car crash. It's, it's absolute existential terror to that person when it thinks about that. Yeah, so what you... Facing annihilation. It, totally, totally. But not even like death annihilation, just total annihilation. It's just there is only presence that's aware of itself. There, <laughs> that person never existed. It was total fiction that you had a life, that you were born, that you had importance or no importance. So what you can do, even though this isn't a prescription, this is just a description, because ultimately that you is not there, but while that you comes back and begins to feel agitated about it, that appearance of that person can just explore where you're feeling that fear or that sense of loss of control in the body. Just explore what that sensation is a bit. Because the more the it's explored, it, the more it's explored, it's seen that it's just not real. There's nothing really there, and that feeling doesn't belong to you, and there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a bodily reaction that's appearing when the sense of self begins to feel like it's not in the controlling seat. And that bodily feeling appears in an infinite space that's so free. But sometimes these bodily feelings happen unconsciously, and then the sense of self is unconscious again, but acting out something in order to feel in control or in order to gain control. 
And it's all unconscious, that kind of functioning. But again, that's not a prescription because there is no one I could give a prescription to. It's just a description of something that might happen next time when that comes up. Yeah, it feels like a, it's a terror in, in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like you said, it, it experienced in kind of in a, in a timelessness and in an yeah. infinite space. Yeah. There's a point. And in my heart where there's this terror. Yeah, and it's all totally illusionary, but it pre presents itself as, as real. And when it's really unconscious, that just gets acted out. What the separate person does is it attempts never to feel that. So if in a relationship you feel out of control, the person is attempting to not feel it. Whatever it is, it's the same feeling. If in work situation, the person's attempting to try and avoid that feeling, you'll notice that you've had that feeling your whole life. You, and you've had it as a seed in things of wanting to control. So is that, I'm not, that's not even a question actually, that's the whole reason for trying to be a self. Yeah. Trying to remember the past all the time. Yeah. Think about the future all the time. Yeah. Always be on guard. Yeah. So it feels Create like it has, yeah, it feels like it has control. So it, and that's exactly why it's imagining the past and telling itself stories and telling itself stories about the future. Part of it is a functioning, like the human has a functioning to be able to recall past and, and future and to think about future. But most of it is about creating an identity. Most of the thinking throughout the day is about so you feel safe, so you can judge where you are in time. Because if you got bumped on the head now and you totally forgot anything, You'd forget everything so you wouldn't even be afraid, but like all of time would disappear. If you had a sense of self that was semi there, that sense of self would be terrified of not knowing what the past and future is because it's always telling itself these two sides so it knows where it's going and where it came from because it's so scared of infinity, that infinite space of what we are. And then the other thing that it's doing, so it's, it's trying to run away from that fear of existence the other thing it's doing is trying to get to comfort and love. And what comfort and love is, is home, the end of seeking. So it's like trying to run away from the fear of love. And at the same time, it's trying to run towards that love. It's like in a hamster ball. It's trying to avoid the fear of love, that, that infinity. And it's trying to run to love. And it just gets itself caught in a loop. And the more and more it grows, so over time, it gets worse and worse. I think as it gets really older, so maybe in its 70s, 80s, uh, it doesn't get, the, the body stops functioning as well and it gets less, but it goes through a period of really going, growing and becoming strong, of always having to be in control, always blaming, always finding reason, always living in the intellect. It's so intense. It's so amazing, though, that we even get to discuss this. Because on this side, I just feel like a black hole and all these words are coming out and it's just amazing that it actually makes sense because I don't even know really what's happening because I can kind of tell on one level but the big shift kind of also made it really hard for me to see myself in time. It functions and I can think but it's also like this speaking that comes from infinity That's and my perception in time is very bad it makes my memory very bad and it makes me sound like I contradict myself a lot because I'm not watching myself like I used to I was always watching and guarding and trying to be someone as now it's just blah, 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 and I'm whatever I am in that moment and I'm always changing dependent on who I'm in relation with because you always become a different person whoever energy or whatever energy you're around you respond to that energy and really we're only responding machines these black hole responding machines. Yeah, it's funny how there's <laughs> these things come out. Yeah, amazing. I mean, even when there's no person there to decide or think about it or anything, things happen. Yeah. Just and it, all by themselves. It's always been like that, even when you're telling yourself a story that it was you, it still was coming from an infinite space, just with the added extra layer of you that's claiming this inside. Oh, but it's right. so amazing, it really is. That all of this happens. It's like a total mystery and miracle. So I'm just putting my feet up. Ah, that's nice. <laughs> I was thinking it was it's it's a miracle to even pop out of that dream for a second. Yeah. And see what's been happening. Yeah. 
and, and right after I had that thought, I realized that the, it's almost the opposite. It's almost, how could you have been lost in a dream in the first place? Yeah. Like, both things are true. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It's so bizarre. It is. Where are it's, you call, Where are you calling from? I like your accent. Oh, thanks. I'm calling from California. Oh, that's a Californian accent. I'm told that I have my own accent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> yeah. I talked to you once before, and you thought I was from Canada. Yeah, this is where I thought you were from again. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I was wearing a hat at the time. It looked like I was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, I just really made myself chuckle. I was going to go for the same thing again. I was going to tell you you were Canadian. I was thinking it already. Yeah, I have to try to speak slowly or no one can understand me. How long ago was our conversation? Last week, and then I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we talked about a month ago. Oh, yeah. And we actually took this journey to the center of the heart, that same place of terror. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, uh, Sorry. and I found out I was just a song that wanted to sing from the heart. I don't know, it was just, it was like a cartoon journey. Huh. And uh, since then, I've just had more and more experiences of. Uh, I of remember. I'm beginning to remember. I'm beginning to remember now. Yeah. yeah. Like now, I, I don't believe my mind as much anymore. In fact, most of the time, I don't believe it at all. Yeah. I just say, oh, okay, that's happening. Yeah. And, and this is why, like, I it can sometimes sound a bit intellectual, but I'm always trying to push on that it's just not true and I've I spend lots of times trying to debunk what we think because part of the seeking energy gets so stuck in believing that some thought or some concept is possibly true and it, it really isn't whereas feelings we maybe they're really intense we can see they're maybe not true easier because they come in big waves and then disappear so we can see that and so maybe we're less attached to it but with thoughts we really believe that some sentence or some thoughts or some ideas are more true than others. And, and there cannot be any thought that can be true. There can be some thoughts that are more true than others, but there can't be any that's a reality because we made up the words. We made up this language. It's, it's like the whales with their sounds believing that their sounds have meaning and really mean something, really mean the nature of reality their whale song means the nature of reality and it means the nature of real reality in the instant it appears but in its meaning it doesn't in what it means in time it doesn't but in the very instant of that song it's the nature of reality yeah just commentary thoughts <laughs> are just yeah just commentary yeah. about the past yeah i mean they happen they happen after the fact Anyways, yeah. yeah. Like when you said they're they're trying to claim something, because they're claiming what happened a millisecond yeah. ago, or a few seconds ago, or a year ago. Yeah. Because what's happening is just happening. Yeah. Already. Yeah, totally. Well, they're trying to predict. Normally, when they're thinking about the future, it's about what you want to get. Like it's, they're trying to predict, or they're trying to get to something, and it just is so irrelevant. This is all we ever have. Yeah, you know, and that and that terror that I'm trying to protect myself from, I'm not sure if that even exists. Yeah. It's like there's there's something in me, or there's something telling this story or telling these lies about some kind of a situation. Yeah. That isn't even there. Yeah, that that's the that that's the really funky part about it because actually, in the very instant of it, in a way it doesn't exist in one way you could say it does it does and doesn't exist but like it doesn't really exist like that it's really yeah 
I mean, we get... something I've been doing. Yeah. 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 Wow. A whole, a whole world of darkness and terror <laughs> that doesn't even exist. Yeah, and a whole, and yet, a, a whole parent lifetime running away from that terror. Yeah, a whole apparent lifetime. It's nicer to just feel free in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> but that, um, that one that, that says that isn't a reliable source. The one that says it's nicer to feel free in the heart, that's not even a reliable source. The reliable source is the instant perception of it. Oh, right, yeah, that's commentary too. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yes, and when I say, it's, it, because normally the commentary is always about avoiding or getting. Not all the time, like sometimes we need commentary of how to do things. But normally when it's about yourself, it's always about getting away or getting to. And so when I say it's not a reliable source, I'm just trying to point to the instant of things. They're always this very instant. And in that, it's not nicer or not nicer having it or not having it. In the very instant of that terror, neither polarities exist. jump in and claim that and keep it forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and that one's the one that doesn't exist. It's not a reality. The reality is the instant of it, which is neither something you want or don't want. In the, in the right. instant of it, it's just innocent energy, not good or bad. The fact that we can think has been our biggest curse and our greatest thing as well because the the fact that we can think is we got lost in thinking but by getting lost in thinking we have the possibility of being this self-aware animal that can kind of, that can go home that can know its own freedom that's that's different from the dog the dog just is free whereas because we lost home we can go home to it but the the thinking that something is painful or pleasurable this is good or this is bad when we identify and separate we're always looking to try to maintain goodness and that's such agony because life is this constant movement this bundle of energy moving and it's painful and pleasurable the dog can't be aware of itself so it just totally accepts whatever it feels and whatever it experiences in that instant and it's not painful or pleasurable to the dog because the dog has no concept of that it just is And there's such freedom in pain and pleasure when it's seen for what it really is. When it's believe, believed that we experience pain or pleasure and that it belongs to us, then we're always trying to stay in pleasure. And this is so painful. It is. It's a constant Battle. pushing away yeah. from what's happening. Yeah. Trying to get away from dark and get to light. And you can't. They come together. Yeah, it's just this massive effort, constant effort. Yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for talking with me. Oh, thanks. It's a really lovely talk to you. And I'm remembering your, you from last time. I can't remember what we talked about, but I remember this energy. It's oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks so much for calling and sharing again. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Bye.